last week on Legally Kidnapped. Good evening. Our top story this week. It's National Adoption Propaganda Month where the child protective industry focuses on liquidating the assets in an effort to make way for the new batch. In Hawaii this week, the child protective industry is accused of not providing enough support to foster children who age out of the system after a young man hanged himself just six months after being booted. So the child protective industry releases the documents in the boy's case to try to defend itself. And a 16-year-old foster child runs away with his girlfriend after being told that they can't see each other anymore. In Connecticut, a mother files a civil rights complaint after winning her case alleging that the child protective industry forced an admission of child abandonment out of her. And Susan Hamilton, the Connecticut child welfare chief, hands in her resignation. In Lafayette, Louisiana, the school system starts ratting children who come to school without lunch money to the child protective industry. Meanwhile, the Louisiana Department of Children and Family Services Secretary Ruth Johnson beats Department of Health and Hospitals Secretary Bruce Greenstein in a race to see who can get the most Twitter followers. And Facebook jumps on the bandwagon and adds an anti-bullying application. China's senior legislature meets with the UNICEF chief to discuss human rights in the region. The U.S. State Department puts adoptions of children from the country of Nepal on hold by refusing to issue visas to make sure the children are really abandoned. In Spain, authorities decide whether or not to snatch a baby from her 10-year-old Romanian mother and the 13-year-old father. And due to apparent cultural differences, the grandmother, who is thrilled about the new baby can't understand what all the fuss is about. Scotland considers banning smokers from being foster parents. And a 17-year-old foster child from Russia takes the ultimate ride in the landing gear of an airplane. In Australia this week, they're going to finally fix the Northern Territory's child protection industry, which has been failing children for years. And privacy rules are supposedly the culprit because state agencies can't share information about child abuse cases. Because of growing dissatisfaction with the Australian educational system, more and more parents are opting to put their kids into private schools. And they're all up in arms over Video Girl Barbie because of fears that the popular fashion doll will be used by perverts and pedophiles to record children. In England this week, the child protective industry wants inspections by the watchdog group Ofsted to be scrapped. And the family court system refuses to lift court fees for child protection cases. The UK's children's minister pushes for more white families to adopt children of color. A Christian couple who was denied a foster care license for refusing to support homosexuality takes their case to court. And a bishop backs them up. Then a mother takes flack for posting a picture on her blog of her five-year-old gay son dressed up in his Halloween costume as Daphne from Scooby-Doo. A judge sticks up for a father who was charged with kidnapping for making a group of bullies apologize to his son. And a foster care agency gives a free laptop to every foster parent who transfers to them from other agencies. In Canada, a mother who is fighting for custody of her two kids in Ontario is deported to Jamaica. In entertainment news this week, teen mom star Amber Portwood gets dumped for abuse using prescription drugs, has a custody battle on her hands, and child protective services up her ass. And a new judge takes over the Jesse James and Janine Lindemulder case. In this week's Foster Crimes Report, a former California baby stealer is found guilty of 16 felonies after falsely accusing a parent and trying to extort money out of him to make it go away. And a former Foster Parent of the Year from Alberta, Canada, already facing sexual abuse accusations, is arrested again for trying to pay more kids for having sex. A British Foster a parent gets two whole years for possessing 14,000 images of child porn, and there will be no criminal charges after a kid was killed from accidental asphyxiation while being physically restrained at a juvenile detention facility in New York. The state of Rhode Island asked a judge to dismiss a children's rights lawsuit, claiming that half of the children named in the class action have since been adopted. In Kentucky this week, two kids run away from a group home, steal a car, then try to run over a cop. In New York, family court judge Gilbert Abramson is in hot water for jailing people without a hearing or access to an attorney. The Vermont Supreme Court grants custody of a child to a lesbian whose ex-lover, the real mother, disappeared with the kid a few months ago. In Wisconsin, two aged-out foster kids find that they are unable to get credit after finding out that they were the victims of identity theft. In Tennessee, a forever home is going to give back the child they adopted from the foster care system to get him the mental health treatment he needs. More and more judges foolishly think that virtual visitation through Skype is an adequate replacement for real visits. And finally, tonight, a former CIA agent is busted for espionage for spying on the United States for Russia because he needed money to pay for his divorce and child custody case. For these stories and all the latest dirt on the child protective industry, visit www.legallykidnapped.com. And until next week, this is Baby LK, over and out.